If you're aware of these three mistakes before you even set foot into your first actuarial job, your first internship, or even your stepping stone position, then you are automatically going to increase your chances of being successful and getting a promotion. Prior to working in my first internship, I had no experience reporting to a manager in a corporate environment. I was a cashier in the past, I was a bookkeeper in a very small company with only two employees, I worked as a babysitter. So how was I supposed to know how to become a top performer in an actuarial role? Well, I didn't at first, but I made mistakes along the way, and today I'm going to share those mistakes with you so that you can avoid them just like I wish I could have. By the way, I'm Bria, Associate of the Society of Actuaries and Actuarial Career Coach. Mistake number one is that I got caught up in the nitty gritty. Now, when I was in my early years as an actuarial analyst, I was responsible for calculating actuarial reserves. And when I went into that role, I really didn't have a good understanding of what an actuarial reserve was. So I had really, I could say, no idea what these different steps that I was doing was actually accomplishing. So I was given a big document of all the different steps that I had to take in order to calculate reserves. And I was following through the little steps that it told me to do. But yeah, I didn't know what I was doing in the big grand scheme of things. And it's really important when you go into an actuarial role and as you're going through different stages that you work purposely on becoming aware of the big picture and really understanding the big picture of what you're doing. You can get really good at the nitty gritty details, but your career is not going to progress and you're not going to get better at your job if you don't make sure that you are trying to understand the bigger picture. How things all fit together is really, really important in helping you progress in your career. When you get to those higher level positions, it's absolutely necessary that you understand how the reserves work with the pricing that works with investments that works with the legal team and all these different areas that kind of come together to make actuarial work make sense. You have to understand that to be one of those top level actuaries in a company. So that's important for you to work on from the very beginning of your actuarial career. By doing this, it means not only are you going to have this amazing foundation, but you're also going to be able to perform better at your job. You're going to be able to give better suggestions to your manager or your team about how things could be done because you do have that much higher level understanding of things. You're probably also going to enjoy your job a lot more. Most people don't really like to just sit there and follow a direction and do it and then follow another direction and do it. It's so much more interesting and motivational if you can actually see how the things that you are doing are impacting the business positively. And it's also going to reduce the number of mistakes you make. If you are just going along trying to follow all the little steps and you don't understand what those steps are really doing, it really opens up the doors to mistakes because you don't know if you did something wrong. You don't know if a result that you're getting really makes sense. So that's again why it's so important to have this level of understanding. Now, how do you get that level of understanding? Well, there are some things you can be doing all the time as you complete different tasks and as you're working throughout different stages of your career. One of those ways is to make sure you ask questions. In my first actuarial job, I had a manager that was incredible. He was always willing to explain how things worked. And I just loved that because he honestly gave me such a better understanding of how all the actuarial reserves worked and what that really meant in terms of pricing and all the regulatory policies, all that different stuff comes together. And it really makes your work so much more enjoyable, but you're also really understanding things at a high level which allows you to progress in your career. So ask questions as much as you reasonably can and it doesn't always have to be to your manager. Your teammates that have been around for a few years are going to have lots more experience and knowledge than you've been able to develop up to that point. So even if you feel like someone is at your same level or maybe they've only been there a few more months than you, they've probably been able to develop and learn a lot of knowledge that you can still take advantage of. So don't feel like you always have to be going to the same person to ask questions. 
Another thing that I found really helpful was to ask to get more involved. So when I was working on big projects, I would often ask if I could participate in some of the more senior level meetings just so that I could get a sense of what they're talking about in those meetings and how all these different departments are coming together to work on this project and what they're all talking about and what their concerns are. And that allowed me to have a really good understanding of the project as a whole rather than my very narrow piece in the project. It means that I was was able to offer suggestions I was able to maybe change the work that I was doing a little bit so that I could accommodate for what other teams needed and what they were wanting and that just makes you an overall better performer in your job and it's going to make you more valuable to the company another thing you can do is read online and utilize chat GBT there are so many resources online if you're looking up different topics in the actuarial career. If you want to know more about reserves, there's information on that. If you want to know about predictive modeling, there's information on that. And ChatGPT is also a fairly new resource, but a great resource for really giving you a condensed, summarized version of whatever you want to know more about. And those tools alone are going to just help you have a better understanding of what you're doing in your actuarial role and how it applies to the big picture. Now these next two mistakes that I'm going to talk about are really big differences between entry level actuaries and more seasoned actuaries, but you can start doing them from the very beginning of your career. Mistake number two was focusing only on the present. Now it's really easy to focus on the current moment because that's what we're living in right now. But when you are in an actuarial role, an internship, or even your stepping stone position, you wanna try thinking ahead more often than not. That means that if a problem arises in your work, you need to think ahead to what potential solutions would be able to solve this problem. When I was working in my actuarial role at first, what I would have done if I found a problem was I would have just told my manager. And when you just tell your manager, that puts the burden onto them. It means that they have to kind of come up with a solution on their own. They probably get a little bit stressed because a mistake has happened and they're just not sure the impact of it, all that sort of stuff. It just kind of floods them with all these different questions and concerns. But if you can come to them with a solution, it's going to mean that they don't have to worry. They feel like you have things under control and they have all the answers that they need right away. So let me tell you about an example. When I was working in that reserving position that I talked about earlier, there was a time, actually many times, but I'll talk about one specific time. There was a time when reserves were calculated incorrectly. There was an error in the calculation. And when I noticed that error, I immediately knew that I was going to tell my manager. But because this had happened before, and since I had been working in the position a while, there were things that I wanted to know about this mistake, like why did it happen? What's the impact of this mistake? What, like how is it going to impact reserves? Is it going to be a big impact on them? And that sort of thing. So. Before I even went to my manager, I made sure that I was calculating these things. I was figuring out how much this was actually going to impact the reserves. I was figuring out what caused this mistake and what can we do to make sure we prevent this mistake in the future. And once I gathered up all that information, that's when I felt like I had a solid understanding of the situation and I was able to go present it to my manager with all these other details that I had already calculated and figured out for myself. And by doing that, it means that I'm not leaving all the burden up to my manager and I'm also giving him all the details that he's going to want to know so that he doesn't have to flood his head with questions and get concerned about different things. He has the answers he needs right away. And this can really help you demonstrate your top performer abilities because it means that people can rely on you. It means that they feel that you have things under control and it's true, you do. If you are finding problems or mistakes or things like that and you are able to figure out all the details that are needed to know, that are necessary to know for that problem to be solved or at least the details that others are going to want to know, it's really going to help give confidence in you. Another area where you can be thinking ahead is Thinking about problems that could occur. If you do things one way, what potential problems might come from that? Or what benefits might come from that is also a good thing to think about. And maybe you could compare different options to present to your manager pros and cons. 
doing those kind of things where you are thinking ahead, thinking about what your manager or your teammates are going to want to know about a certain situation is always going to be beneficial. Now, this is something that sometimes takes some time to develop, but again, you can start right from the beginning. And I say it takes time because when you're just starting, you don't necessarily know what are all those important details that people are going to want to know as a result of this situation that has occurred. Now, this kind of mindset can be used in so many areas, but some of the times I think it's going to be most valuable is when you're creating documentation, you're going to want to anticipate what others are going to need to know about a process or a project, all that sort of stuff. Think ahead, what kind of things might they want to know? It's also going to come valuable when you're having your work peer reviewed. So if someone else is looking at your work, maybe a manager, maybe a team member, they're going to want to have all the details about why you did calculations the way you did or what caused you to do something this way rather than this way. And if you have that all in advance ready for them, then it's going to mean you're saving a lot of time, you're avoiding a lot of questions, and you're overall just making people feel more confident in your abilities. You can also do this going into meetings. Anticipate what kind of questions might come up around the topic that the meeting is going to be discussing. We also talked about how if problems arise, this is a situation you'd want to be thinking in advance. So there's all sorts of ways this can be used and it's going to help you in your career. Mistake number three is assuming that I did everything correctly in my work. Now, I had a lot of uncomfortable feelings when I would send my work to maybe a manager or someone else on my team and almost immediately they'd come back and make me aware of a mistake that I made in my calculations or where I was linking to the wrong number in an Excel workbook, things like that, that are just silly mistakes that I should have caught myself. And after having this uncomfortable feeling many times, I started to really take it more seriously that I needed to check my work before I sent it to anyone. And that's what's going to allow you to keep your credibility high. It's easy to make mistakes. When you have finally finished something, you might be relieved that it's done. You might be working quickly and maybe you're too familiar with the numbers and things just start, kind of start to blend together. It happens in actuarial work because there's so many numbers that you're working with, big spreadsheets, big databases, it happens. But you need to make sure that you are trying to catch as many of those errors as possible before they get past you. No manager wants to feel like they constantly have to check your work over to make sure that all the mistakes have been found. They don't want to feel like they're helicopter bosses or managers overseeing every single little thing that you do. That's no fun for a manager most of the time and it's no fun for you. Instead, you want to be known for high quality, air-free work. Now, some ways to do this are first to thoroughly check your work before you send it off to anyone, obviously, but you can also put lots of checks in place. And this is something I did quite often, especially in Excel workbooks. I would put checks in place where different numbers were supposed to balance, or if one number was definitely going to be higher than another number, I'd put little checks in my Excel workbook to just make sure that those checks would all be okay before I sent my work off. Especially in something like the reserve calculations where where I do these calculations every single month. Adding little checks into your workbook makes it easy to find potential errors in the work that you're doing. You also want to make sure that numbers make logical sense. This happened to me many times where I didn't really think about whether the results that I was getting made reasonable sense. So for example, if a certain change that I was making was supposed to make reserves increase, but they actually made reserves decrease, and then I told my manager that reserves went down, and he's like, hmm, that doesn't really make any logical sense. So. After hearing him do that a few times, I started to realize that I should be doing that too. And it made a big difference because then not only was I feeling better about my response, I also could inform him of why the reserves went down when you thought they were going to go up or something along those lines. Another good way to do this is through peer review. So potentially handing your work to someone else on your team to have a look at it for any minor errors or mistakes that maybe didn't stand out to you can be a good way to catch them before you send them up to higher level management. Now, you're not going to catch all your errors. We are human, we're gonna make mistakes along the way, but the more that you can catch before they get past you, the better.
Now, I know that most future actuaries watching this video are fairly introverted, so I'm going to ask you to step out of your comfort zone for a minute and write down below, comment about whether you like this style of video where I'm helping you to not necessarily achieve the goal of getting your first actuarial job, but how to achieve more success when you eventually get into that actuarial role. Did you like that? And also let me know what types of videos, what topics you'd like me to share and create in the future. I can't wait to see what you suggest.